We are on. Welcome to this week's episode of Sexually Speaking with Keisha Clark and Rhonda Burns. And of course, we have a special guest today, and we're going to introduce her in just a moment. If it's your first time joining us, <laughs> thank you. If it's your first time hearing about us, anything like that, thank you. If you're joining us on the replay, thank you. Any way you do it, we're so excited and grateful that you have come to play. And we appreciate hearing feedback from you, getting questions from you. So, whether whether you're joining us live or on the replay, there is a way to join us uh, to send questions to us via email or if you want to enter them via the chat or the Q&A. So if you're live and it's your first time, if you scroll your uh, cursor over the screen, a little line of options will pop up and you can click on chat. You can send a message to any of the three of us or all of us together or the entire group if you want to submit your question however way, whatever way it works for you. Um, and if you've never heard anything about us before, um, wow. Well, <laughs> where you been? <laughs> where have you been, right? <laughs> Living in a barn? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sexually speaking came about through uh, roughly about a year of adventure between myself and Rhonda Burns. And and um, it's, it's really, we, we want to create a space and we choose to create a space that we can have unconventional conversations to unfuck your life. Um, we know that there is all kinds of crazy ass shit out there about sex, all kinds of weird definitions and meanings and significance that's been put on it. And we also know that there's a lot more possible and a lot more available to us with all of the energies that sex actually is way beyond copulation. So we're including the joys of copulation and we're going way beyond that and what else is possible when we're willing to play in that field. Much bigger arena, many more possibilities to play with and that's where we like to go dance. So Say hello, Miss Rhonda Burns. Back from hello, Miss Rhonda time. Burns. <laughs> okay, sassy pants. <laughs> oh, it's so good to be back. I'm like, I'm a little. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm a little tired. My body's still not adjusted back to Texas time because California mm. was a rock and awesome trip. <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Gee, lovely. Oh man, it is good. It is. I'm, I'm good. I'm so excited because today, folks, is actually something kind of special. It's a first time for us. <laughs> it's our first threesome on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like to go all kinds of places here on Sexually Speaking, let me tell you. So today we are actually going to be talking about the topic of sex is like oxygen. And some of you uh, might be old enough to remember a song that was Love is Like Oxygen. And that's kind of where I started, to, this sort of topic started to dance around for me, um, was looking at too much sex, not enough sex. The song, of course, talks about love. And how many of us equate love and sex as the same thing or copulation more specifically uh, with love and how much does that mess up our lives <laughs> and what else would be possible if we were willing to play with what is too much what is not enough is there such a thing as too much not enough or something else or way more and we brought a very special guest today her name is jen halterman she is one hot rocking mama and we are so excited to have her here hi jen Oh my goodness. Hello. Hello. This is wonderful. Uh, wow. I don't even know what to say after that introduction. Thank you so much. I know. <laughs> I'm getting all hot and bothered here. I'm like, woo, hello. <laughs> it turns me on to be acknowledged that way. Yes, I'll have more of that. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Cool. Well, tell folks just a little bit about you because you've done some really cool, some, some very cool stuff. So if you wanted to say hi and let folks know hi. a little bit about you. <laughs> hi, I'm Jen Halterman. It's so good to be here. Uh, wow, my history is long and super sorted. I came from very conservative upbringing, left it behind and found my health and, and well-being also came out of the closet at a later age, so I started exploring my sexuality and realized that the reason that, you know, three failed marriages and lots of misery and lots of unhappiness, and, oh, there might be a reason. I might be doing everything that's not true for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I quit dishonoring that aspect of myself. I did, I'm not going to say I totally quit honoring, dishonoring myself because, well, you know, <laughs> I like being human. <laughs> <laughs> and I just dove into what's it like to be me. I've done a radio show podcast for years and years called Everyday Joy. And um, then 
a little hiccup happened called death in my life and an entire section of my family tree left this earth all at once and i decided um yeah maybe doing a podcast five days a week wasn't for me anymore and that was part of the dishonoring was like mm -hmm. i kept doing things publicly so i went a little private and then I started a new podcast, did that for a time with my beloved wife now. And, uh, you know, I'm just playing in what would it take to choose to be alive every single day. And part of that is the energy of sex. Part of that is the energy of what does it look like to honor me in this 10 seconds? What, what makes me want to mm, play with life in a way? that turns me on because I am a very, very big believer. And a lot of what I coach and teach is orgasm is not just for the bedroom. Oh, no wonder we're such good friends. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. And that's so funny. Cause this topic, when, when, right, this topic showed up before you did in my life. Now I had, I kind of met you virtually through some group right. things. But then, um, really, you and I shared a, a class experience one weekend after this topic had actually, like, waved at me. Mm -hmm. And then after that weekend, it was like, we want to play with Jen for this topic. We want to play with Jen. Call Jen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, wow. And, and I just, so what, let's start with all of the definitions maybe that we have created about sex and orgasm and what it has to be and how it has to show up. We do this a lot on this show. Um, mm -hmm. All of the things that we've decided, concluded or bought and sold that it's supposed to be and can never be and should be and that we have to make it be or we can't let it be. Ouch. <laughs> Would everybody be willing to choose beyond any of those places that you've allowed that to be real and true for you yes yes, yes. Ooh. and what else is possible when we tap <clears throat> into what we actually know about all of these yummy juicy magical energies that mm -hmm. that we actually the three of us refer to often as sex um mm -hmm. Rhonda yeah. when when we play with sex is like oxygen what what pings for you um, it's interesting. I was just sitting here thinking, because again, I'm in a cycle in my life at the moment where I have chosen, and I've said this before, chosen not to copulate with anyone else. And it's been a long time. And so when I look at the copulation aspect, um, so as I was sitting here, I was just like, I am sex. I am oxygen. And it, at this stage in my game right now, like being the joyful, exuberant, outgoing, bold expression that I am, that is my oxygen. I am my oxygen. And I know oh. it's, it's life infusing oxygen in many people's lives. I, and, and I had it witnessed this weekend in a very powerful way. I'm getting kind of weepy because when I showed up as the oxygen for myself that I am, people received it and then reflected it. And it was fucking phenomenal so yeah that's, that's my my two cents at the moment <laughs> my, <laughs> the week, it'll probably be different <laughs> oh my god that just like turned all of me on like my whole body's just rejoicing with you i mean beautiful. that is Thank amazing you. You. and that's that's so beautifully puts this energy into words and so what does that bring up for you jen yeah. Oh, yumminess is what it brings up. It brings up like <clears throat> yummy tinglies all over my body because, um, God, I was so in the mindset, the, the real limitation for decades that in order to feel alive, in order to, um, sustain the loving relationship I had, we had to be fucking, we had to be having sex. And it wasn't until I got into a relationship that I realized there was so much more than just the copulation aspect. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now my ex, but oh, thank God for her. Um, because what she did was she received me fully. Mm -hmm. And I realized that Every time I cook, people refer to whenever I cook a meal and things, they say it's gen food. And I'm known for it. 
Like, I post a picture and people are like, oh, my God, that's gym food. They can tell it. They can see it. They don't even have to know. Somebody else I cook for will refer to a dish. They'll see it. They'll know it's me. And I realized I'm having sex with the food I make. No wonder people are, like, moaning and groaning at the table. <laughs> yeah, baby. And I, yeah, and the more I embrace this, the more I embrace, like, what would it be like to make love with this water? What would it be like? And, and I will give you an example of how the more I embrace that I am sex, I am aliveness, I am sexualness, I am oxygen, all those things, the more everything in my life started talking to me. So, for example, I am a coffee lover, <laughs> lover, 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 and therefore I love my mugs. I yeah. love my mugs. Yep. So this was a mug for today. However, when this was my water bottle, I got a very clear uh, – uh, no. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you think you're doing. <laughs> yeah. But Wedding Crystal came to me and said, Oh, baby, I will hold your water today. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's what it brings up for me because I love that you said, You know, I'm choosing not to populate right now. Mm -hmm. And there are times, whether it's physical things, like my wife broke her collarbone. There's no way we are copulating, right? Yeah, but we made exactly. love all the time. Yep, yep. Yeah. And sometimes we were touching physically, holding hands, but sometimes we were just, you know, in the same space, making love and having that sex and that exchange of that healing, nurturing energy. That's mm -hmm. what it brings up. Okay, I could go on for hours. Absolutely. So. No, that's beautifully articulated. Well, that is all kinds of yummy. Just honey. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. How about you, Keisha? Display that yeah. buffet. Um, yeah. You know, I'm. it's really... So I actually, in, in the realm of copulation, that hasn't really occurred for me in quite some time. Mm -hmm. And yet, like everything, now that I'm choosing what I'm choosing, I'm choosing into more of my living my life. I'm choosing into more of the possibilities of me. I'm actually choosing into more of who I be and, mm -hmm. and all that I be. And, and what I'm finding is that my body is turned on more of the time than not. And she has these incredible capacities that she's just been showing me. And this has been for probably about the last, roughly the last two years, I guess, a little over two years now. And we've just, I just stopped trying to tell her what to do and be. <laughs> and she started to reveal things to me. And I really did feel like, you know, the secret of Nim or, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings kind of thing. It was like, the things that my body has shown me have been so far beyond what I can put into words in, in human words. Um, and so incredibly potent. And I can't, even in saying that I don't, I'm aware that there's way more that I can become aware of that she can still show me. And with really choosing into being willing to have conversations with sexually speaking and really represent and invite people to the energy of possibilities with sex and what that could be for each of each of you guys you know um that has brought me into more of my what i call my knowing and what i know is that like sex all of these beautiful amazing energies this magicalness that we be um my word, but also my awareness. <laughs> um, it really is something that bodies desire. And, and I will say require, and I don't say that from like a neediness. Uh, but my awareness is that there is so much contribution from those energies when we're willing to allow them to be active and to, to, to move and, and show us how to, how to play, what to play, invite us to play, I guess. Um, and I'm also aware that we have this thing about too much and not enough. And there's all kinds of interesting points of view about, you know, like, like you have to go on a sex diet or something. It's like, but we, because, firstly, I'm aware that we consider sex primarily as copulation in this reality. You know, mm -hmm. um, the conventional application is typically a physical form of some kind of something. Yeah. And <clears throat> so we have this thing about, um, you know, addiction or abstinence seems to be those those polar things Dream. that we put on it. And so I'm curious, like, what comes up for you, goddesses, when we play with, like, those energies? And then, like, what else? What do you know? What? 
Well, I have a really interesting, so this week, so I was in California week for a week, but I had an immersion weekend um, with this an amazing group and they, it was specifically for coaches and holistic practitioners. So they were people like us, right? And it was 200 of us for, you know, three solid days, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Like it was all in, it was phenomenal. And what I noticed, I noticed it early on, but as the weekend went on, so I, I'm a, among like-hearted, like-minded you know, players in the world who really are here to transform and change things. And I could see it so visibly and spe- this topic fits it perfectly. The, those who are radically alive and thriving in the sexual oxygen, right? The sexualness, the vibrancy, the vitality, and those that were just there. And it was mm. so uh, crazy when I finally just spoke like, oh, this is what it looks like. Right. And I see it in the world. But when you see it amongst your own and the varying degrees of it. And then what I did is I actually turned my oxygen level up, if you will. And it was like moths to a flame. I mean, instantly. And I was like, oh, and again, I wasn't doing anything different. I was just more of me without any more barriers. And more people flocked in and wanted to sit by me and play with me and talk to me and have. Right. It's like, oh, so imagine being more of that, like how much faster money would come in, how much faster clients would come in, how much TV apparent, right? Is like, oh, got it, universe. So that was a really fun place to play with this topic, actually. And I love that it just so beautifully mirrors, but it was very, and I'm visible. You guys know I like to learn visually. It was like, got it, universe, and I locked it in. So (laughs) I just want to share that, you know? I love that. It helped, amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, and... So have you ever, did you ever buy, I both for, I'm asking both of you, did you ever buy into that you were an addict when, oh, or, yeah. or when did, did you become aware at some point that you really liked sex, like both copulation and all the other stuff? And, and did you ever buy into that that meant that you were something not right about you? Uh-huh. I'll let Jen talk, but I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> The hell um, yeah. <laughs> let me just say, I was raised Mormon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, hmm. that sums it up. And if you don't know why that's funny, don't look it up. Don't bother. Just don't go to that. <laughs> so I can remember, and here's something really yummy. Um, I actually remember being, you know, copulating with this woman that I was with and um, knowing people were coming to the house and not caring because we were just so busy (laughs) and and I wasn't going to stop. I don't care if they're coming or they can wait on the porch. And, um, oh my God. And I can remember actually going and greeting them with the uh, quilt wrapped around me and saying, I'll be right out. (laughs) And then going back, you know, doing what we did and then coming back out. And I can remember one person in particular looking at me and, and this, now you got to understand the energy this was coming from really, really, really wanted to appear to be um, a compliment, but the vibration under it was a shit ton of judgment. Mm -hmm. And what it looked like was, <laughs> you are so whooped. You really can't get enough of her, can you? Whoa. And I remember going, um, that's totally true. And I also know you just tried to cut me. Wow. Yeah. And and that sense of too much started coming out in, well, we'd love to invite you to for dinner if you can manage to get out of bed. Whoa. Do you have clothes on? Can I come over? Well, you can come over whether I have clothes on or not. (laughs) (laughs) I just may take a minute to answer the door. Be patient, whatever. And if you walk in, say la vie. Um, And so that kind of thing started turning into a bad thing. I started going, well, maybe it is too much. Maybe it is too much. Okay, fast forward. Then... I'm in another relationship, Uh, not the current one, but a past relationship. (laughs) And I can remember these people coming over and saying to my then, you know, partner, oh, just wait, it's new now. Give it a year or two. You may not even touch for weeks. Wow. Yeah. 
project much. <laughs> right. And I can remember the partner at the time, like going into like literally blood draining. Ugh. And right. I'm telling, this is what I'm telling you is from that moment, anything that was natural became needy, creepy. Mm -hmm. Wow. You have to, to prove you love me. If we stop having sex, I'm going to lose you. And literally, I don't want none of that. That's the last person I want to copulate with. Wow. Yeah. And so when wow. I hear all of this and I, you know, all the judgments and, oh yeah, I'm so sexual and I'm so this, but I'm not copulating. So really am I sexual? Now I got to keep it a secret because if people don't know that I'm not having sex with my spouse or whatever the, the crazy yeah. is that people yeah. choose, what it creates is we pick up even the compliments, the snide remarks, the insults, the projections, the, that's why we do the, you know, decisions, judgments, conclusions, all that. And we clear it because we end up picking it up. Mm -hmm. And when we realize, wait a minute, am I actually doing this because I want to? <laughs> we realize, oh, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Do I like to breathe? Yeah, try living at 10,000 feet elevation for a few years. You'll find out how much you love oxygen. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it, yeah. it's so fascinating because in the song, Love is Like Oxygen. Mm -hmm. This is from the 70s if you want to look it up, guys. Uh, it, it, they, part of the refrain is you get too much, you get too high, not enough, and you slowly die. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really kind of fun and fascinating that our bodies – there's like this innate capacity to receive those energies, create something amazing with them, and then offer them back out into the world in a very generative way. And, mm -hmm. and I, I'm fascinated that we've put so much stuff on it, you know, like what you experienced with the comments that you heard. Um, I know Rhonda grew up in a family that was very, uh, very particular. Christian conservative. Christian <laughs> yeah. conservative. Yeah. Um, and I had my family was I, it, there wasn't really didn't really come from a religious uh, background or religious structure, but there was just as much rage and craziness and insanity around sex and bodies. And I know that there's probably a few million of us that that applies to, if not a few hundred million of us. And so, what for you was a turning point? Like, was there an awareness? Was there a What, what, what is, was that the moment that you began to choose different consciously? Like you, something clicked for you? Yes, actually it's when, um, wow, this is an interesting thing to have come into the conversation, but you know, she is my daughter. Uh, I, my daughter Kelsey is, and her family is who left the planet. Um, and yesterday was her birthday, so. There's an added vibe for why she'd yeah. be up today. But here's the thing. Um, I, I, she, I used to tell my kids, you better get to living. Because my daughter had a premonition, and she shared it with me at 16, that she would die young. And she said, Mom, I don't see past my 20s. She died at 21. And... I can remember telling her that all the time. I mean, we started on her bucket list, she, skydiving as soon as she could, all of this. Like, you better get to live in. Come on, Kelsey, what are we going to do for your bucket list this month? Hey, Tom, what are we going to do for the bucket list? Um, now, you know, there's a whole lot to this story I'm not going to go into, but my son was overdosed at a party, left his body, chose to come back. My daughter then left her body and didn't choose to come back. So both of my kids have face this so the fact that I kept saying you better get to live and you're you're here you're still here on the planet let's keep living was you know some people are like there's irony for you ah, you know but here's what happened when she died and I went through the grief points I realized I'm still alive wow and I better get to live in mm -hmm. And when I realized I quit having sex with my partner, that really I was out of that dynamic. I, you know, I had chosen out. I was just there physically. Um, and people would say, your aliveness is coming back. Your aliveness is coming back. And she would, like, literally, like, oh, does it mean we're going to have sex again? Like a puppy. Ah! And I'm like, 
<laughs> I'm having sex with my water glass right now. <laughs> you know? Like I was like, okay, there's something so different here. And the more I would have sex with me, just being me, it didn't matter if I was eating peanut butter and apple slices. It didn't matter. I have this little thing with tiny spoons, little teeny, like not a quarter of a teaspoon size measuring wise. Mm -hmm. That I will eat a meal with a tiny spoon because it slows me down. Because to me, if I'm going to achieve orgasm, I, I just need three things. And it's not body parts. Presence, awareness, and sensation. Mm -hmm. And if I bring presence, awareness, sensation to even a teeny tiny thing of applesauce or, you know, Godiva chocolate or whatever it does, whatever it is, I'm feeding my aliveness by the presence I'm bringing, the awareness, the, that sensation, allowing myself to experience it fully. And the more I did that, the more alive I realized, oh my gosh, I am so alive. I'm alive. And yet I'm living a life that is not alive. It doesn't contribute to that. And so what I did is I left all environments, relationships, anything. Once I realized, oh, wait, does this contribute to my aliveness? And it had nothing to do with anybody being wrong. I had nothing to do with any judgment about them at all. It was just this no longer contributes. I'm here because a habit of obligation, expectation, whatever that is. That is, it was a switch. It did turn on. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, it was like Kelsey shows up with craziest stuff. Like, here's a friend. Here, go go talk to Keisha. <laughs> Mom, go. Go to foundations. You know, go to this class. Go on this trip. Go wherever mm -hmm. it is. And the more that I realized, you know, people, oh, she's dead. And, oh, it's nice she's coming to comfort you. No, let me tell you, she's the biggest instigator for me choosing my aliveness out of anything in my life. And so mm -hmm. honestly, that's what happened for me. That is so gorgeous. Good. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There's such a lovely space here. It's like, for me, it's one of those times when words really don't, they're not required. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And yet I know that we're, <laughs> this is a conversation. <laughs> yeah, we kind of have to conversate. So you know, um, <laughs> so I do want to invite everybody just kind of, tap into what Jen is being, tap into this energy. And I'm, I'm perceiving that there's an enormous number of people who, for whatever reason, no, this is not about judging or critiquing the reason, but there's, there's so many of us that spend so much of our lives um, in that space of, it's just, we keep it just out of our reach. We keep the joy of us just out of our reach. And I love what, what you were just sharing, Jen, is this beautiful invitation to grab it, bring it into you, bring it into your life and let it be a part of what you're doing now. And, and I so get that that kind of, one of those pivotal things is the conclusions we have around what that says about us, if we're going to choose that. Um, so what is it like to be choosing for you? I'm, I'm putting this to both of you. Like, what do you notice choosing for you now that that's just like different and, and more? Well, for me, I'll speak to that because I'm sitting here and thank you for that, Jen, because it actually just, because I was looking for a moment, right? Like, and, and probably my most pivotal moment, I share this over and over, is when after I had Bowen, my son, and I looked at my life and it's like, if this is all there is, I want out, right? I had the six figure, you know, corporate, like I had it all. I had all the trappings of success and I was in robotic mode and I, and I recognized that and I dis disassembled my marriage and I walked away and I walked away from corporate and, you know, I just, I did it. And what I just got with Jen talking about her daughter was that Bowen, wow, and, and he is such a co-collaborator with me, but he was the demand. He came in. He's such the vital force of living and the orgasmic living that he is. Oh my God. He's unfiltered. He's uncensored. He's, and he was the demand. And, and, and that was my, I didn't realize it until just this moment, how much he was the catalyst 
to my wake up call. I never gave him the credit that until just this moment. So that's like, I'll be non on that one for a while. So, um, but in terms of your question, Keisha, like for me, the freedom and the clarity to choose to go where I want to go, when I want to go, how I, with no explanation necessary for anybody, you know, like this is what I'm going to choose because I know that choosing into that freedom and into that, you know, because it's light and right for me, it expands everything in my life, living my body, my reality, my kid, everything. And so there was a time that I didn't, that I wouldn't because A, I didn't know what was on the other side or what was going to show up or how, like I just didn't, nobody had given me permission, right? All the bullshit that's in play at the time. And so now it's just like, come on, let's go. And there's no question. Like there's such a trust in myself, trust in the universe, trust in just every support system that's in play that I didn't actually know was there before. And now it's undeniable. And that's what I help and support other people choosing into that, that are in that space of I want out, but I don't know how to change it. So that's yeah. kind of, yeah, where I'm at. How about you, Keisha? I'd love to hear like your. Oh, your- God, it's, <clears throat> it's so interesting. I created a really um, <laughs> crazy scenario. Um, <clears throat> the <clears throat> space, the, the physical space that I chose, that I have chosen to occupy for a while now, um, I think would surprise many people <laughs> with the fact that I've been choosing it. And yet being here in the in the place that I've been the physical place the physical property that I've been on uh has brought me more I just should probably have not put even put makeup on today (laughs) it's brought me so much more of me and so much more um presence is is one of the words but there's something beyond it's like this super beingness this this um like i'm the the nature here the animals here the uh even this structure and and this little area regardless of how it appears you know on the outside i i swear i have been in this little enchantment bubble or really quite a big enchantment bubble um that has allowed me to really just be in the pressure cooker as well as be in the incubator as well as be in this cradle of so much um, loving and kindness and caring from both people who have bodies and people who don't. And um, the aliveness of that at times has been so intense. Um, And I so get that we we we've created this because I did it. I created this this too much this thing of too much. Um, it's like I set the 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 my own set point really really low in reality. And as I've looked at what is what is my actual set point, it's mm-hmm. so much higher <laughs> yeah. than what I had decided or concluded it was supposed to have been. You know, to keep everybody else comfortable. And I am an immensely, I am someone who can be referred to as an immensely sexual being. And that doesn't mean that I sleep with a lot of people. Um, There's just, it's something that I ran from for the longest time, or I tried to, um, that that energy is just such a part of me, that uh, there's nothing that I can do that doesn't come across in a very, what many people um, interpret as sexual way. Like the energy of me is very sexual, very moving, very, um, in many cases, exotic and erotic. And people used to describe me as very exotic. Um, so <laughs> the, the really choosing into that for me has been coming to this space of if I deprive myself of me, of the sex of me, of all of these energies that I organically be, much like the two of you have have stated so beautifully, I will die. Yes. I will kill this body. Mm-hmm. I will wither on the vine. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> had no idea we were going to play with this. I know we're just I love all the tears. I love it. Like it's good. Um, it's, it's good. So, oh, it is. It mm. so totally mm. is. And. Um, 
Yeah, it's <sighs> and and for me, and at times it has shown up as um, I just want to fuck like Minx, mm -hmm. and then at other times it has shown up as like music comes pouring out of me, and other times it shows up as cooking things and just like creating as I go, you know, and other times it's conversations, and other times it's and so now I bring that sex into. I bring the sex of me into everything. And when I notice myself trying to not do that or trying to choose against that, um, I've been developing the muscles of using the tools <laughs> to stop that and, and change that. Um, and what's really interesting is creation, the way that I organically create my life has now been showing up in a way that is like I could never have even imagined um, and I have no idea that I there's no way that I can tell you that by this date this and this and this is happening for me and yet I have an awareness of things that are in motion and and so I, it's really all of this and these conversations that we get to have with sexually speaking and our radio shows and just engaging with amazing that I get to play with people like the two of you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. My set point is so much higher <laughs> and, and what people saw have, have been calling too much is actually not enough. Right. And, and part of what I know is that, we do require more of this. This is something to breathe into our whole life and allow it to be a generative force. Allow ourselves to be really receiving the contribution of that generativeness as well as choosing to be a part of the generativeness. Um, either one of you can talk anytime. I'll be totally happy to shut up for a moment. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. I, I do, I want to talk about this aspect a little. Yeah. Um, too much, too much. You're too much, Jenny. Too loud, too wild, too crazy, too much sex. You're too boy crazy. You're now too gay. Now you're too this, too that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we start, like you were speaking of, Rhonda, about just turning up that your sex, turning up mm -hmm. your attractiveness, whatever, I don't, words are wonderful and whatever you want to call it is great. I call it aliveness, mm -hmm. just that vibration, my total aliveness. Okay. So turning it up and, and that moths to the flame, the attractiveness, mm -hmm. whether people have their aliveness turned up or they are totally in the dark, it's a draw, which is why mm -hmm. a lot of the work that I do is teaching people how to seduce aliveness, your own and use aliveness to be seductive in your business in your marketing in your relationships, all of that. Right. And that way that you are attracting those who are attracted to also to that engagement instead of doing the push and the hard. But here is something that was very pivotal for me and fairly recently is when Sherry and I chose to get married and we did our vows. We had talked a lot about this, about, look, and do the till death do we part. I don't do the sickness and health thing. Actually, I, it trust me, it's going to be a whole lot better if I choose through sickness and choose through health, but I'm not going to vow it right. so that now it's a bondage for both of us. That's just my, I cleared way too many bondings to do that. <laughs> so I'm like, what would I be willing to vow? What would I be willing to vow? And actually my wedding vow to her was, <laughs> I vow to be my too muchness oh. and never turn it down again. Beautiful. Wow. That was my vow. And when, when that happened, people were like, is it different being married? I'm like, well, let me tell you what, our vows change us for sure. <laughs> <laughs> because anything that was in the way of that then started blowing up, falling away, leaving, disappearing, ghosting, all that stuff. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, yeah, by me choosing, by me saying, I'm going to be too much, what would it take for me to be too much in this moment? You know, what would it take for me too much in this moment as I'm preparing to be, I look at the box of this screen, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you see here up? 
Okay. Whoop. Right. Okay. That's what you see. Mm -hmm. But my too muchness started in the shower today. It's in the panties. Mm -hmm. It's in what I'm wearing below my waist. <laughs> it's in the boots I chose because I'm all of my too muchness, mm -hmm. not just what, you know, a lot of you who are watching this are very intuitive, very psychic. You can perceive there's a lot of this going on. I, I am choosing to engage with all of that as my too muchness. And I can tell you that, you know, walking into some place where people believe that too much is a sin or it's pride or it's, uh, assaulting or it puts it in their face if I just walk into a room that's an invitation for judgment but it's my choice as to whether my barriers are up like a windshield and a bug of their judgment is gonna splat and get their shit all over me <laughs> or if it's barriers down and it just floats on by like you know a butterfly right. and that's my choice so Part of being too much is actually choosing that barriers down, all energetic barriers down, and to allow judgment to be not about me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that moth to the flame thing is not about me either. Yeah. <laughs> but what I choose to engage with and co-create with is totally my choice that way. I love that you... I, I, this moth to a flame, the way that just landed for me is um, I, I flashed back to a moment that I was um, actually I looked at someone and I just sort of freaked out like it shook my entire universe to look into their eyes and and I, I've that's been sort of a touchstone for me uh, over the last couple of years of first of all was I willing to see what they were willing to see of me? And now it's, it's becoming, am I willing to be that person? And as you were talking about the too big, the too, too much, the too loud. Um, and, and that can be even whether we're saying a word or not, you know, mm -hmm. but what I love is I'm so getting how being our too much. There's for, for a lot of us who, we, it, well, that doesn't need to be said. So, so that being too much, what I'm really starting to get is the invitation of that. And mm -hmm. that when people are drawn to us, I'm, all of their, what we would call good judgments, you know, <laughs> the things they see that they like, you know, um, what I'm also getting a little more clarity around is that are we willing to be a person, to be an energy that people can see the possibilities for themselves, mm -hmm. greater possibilities for them? Like when I looked in that person's eyes, at first, of course, I went into total terror. <laughs> but once I got rid of all of my stuff that I'd layered on to what that was supposed to mean, and I really got present with that moment, what I realized that I was trying to run from was that I could see so much more of me if I was willing to look in their eyes and if I was willing to receive what they were aware of that was possible for me. Because they didn't see me through my points of view. Mm -hmm. They just saw me from the place of no judgment mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. and the place of no judgment of them. And I love that point that you made um, that really both of you have spoken to of walking into a room and letting your barriers be down, having no judgment, choosing to turn it up and letting people see this is where it's such a, a beautiful thing as I'm coming to learn more of this is we get really caught up in thinking that people are looking at, at us, judging us. It's all about us. And yes, for us, it's all about us, but for everybody else, it's all about them too. So being our loudness and, and offering off that oxygen is about what I get is the possibilities there of offering them that aliveness of them because we're looking for that. How many of us are, are seeking that? What is it going to take to wake me up? What is it going to take to love my life? What is it going to take to feel that beauty, that sex, that gorgeousness, that yumminess, that succulence, what is it going to take? And so 
that makes me think of Marianne Williamson's piece, you know, that is often quoted about we don't, what we really fear is being that beauty. Mm -hmm. And what if that wasn't a huge responsibility to bear? What if that wasn't a burden? Um, What if that was something that is a potency that we have not even begun to know the possibilities of? Um, And what can that add to copulation? (laughs) You know, would we let it show up there too? And would we let it ha- would we let it show up in all parts of our lives? You know, and we've spoken to that in a number of our conversations here, mm-hmm. in particular. And and here it is again. Like, would you be willing to not shut a part of you off for any part of your life? And I, that just more and more and more is like waving. So, gosh, where do you want to take this? We've got about twelve minutes, thirteen minutes. <laughs> Where does it want to go? And I love that we're all just breathing. It's like, I know, I know. Like there's so much. take it in. Just take mm-hmm. it in. You know? you know, this is the only thing that has come up that has come up a few times. So I'm going to speak it. It is a metaphor that is used so many times, especially in the coaching world and parenting and all of that is you've got to put on your own oxygen mask first. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So how many how many of us are depleted of our aliveness, our sex, our oxygen, because we keep trying to give it to Mm -hmm. our partner, our children, our whatever. And when we do refer it to copulation, okay, if we are trying to give the pleasure of copulation and orgasm to our lover, the person we are choosing at that moment, Mm -hmm. where are we? (laughs) you got to put on your oxygen. you got to have your sex on. You've got to have your aliveness, your, that, that yummy, just, you know, like if you're like, okay, so you need orgasm. Okay. What does that mean? Does it mean blow job? Does it mean hand job? Does it mean, you know, intercourse? Like what? Okay. You need, you need that. Where are you in that? Mm-hmm. Because unless you're in that, you're just getting a good damn workout. <laughs> I can sweat at the gym. I can yes. dance in the kitchen. But if I'm just like, <laughs> just think about this. Yes. Okay, are you there yet? Are you there yet? Are you there yet? As opposed to, ah, oh, you know, like, yes. just feel the difference. Like, totally. okay, so here's mine, and I'm calling it up right now. I don't care if I'm on screen. I'm calling it up calling it up, calling it up. And then when I say, are you, are you with me? That is a totally different experience. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Well, so how many people leave their body? How many of us have like stopped majority. breathing? The majority. Right? Yeah. Right. And, and okay. So what would it be like to breathe all the way through sex? Right. What, would it, what would it be like to breathe all of the sex in and breathe all the way through it? Wow. <sighs> that's that piece. That's that presence piece for me. Yeah. Oh, when I add that presence, presence of breathing, have you ever, like, I know this is crazy, but have you ever just let yourself be so present while you're urinating? Really, yeah. just breathe. Total well, awareness of the relief that's happening as your body just does this thing, urinating, okay? Are you willing to have all that sensation? Like, yeah. now add that to copulation. Like, yeah. add that to every single connection point. It doesn't matter what the body parts are. It doesn't matter. I was sitting at Phantom of the Opera with a guy I was dating. We were holding hands. I totally orgasmed. I look over and he's like, Oh my God, I just came in my pants. I'm like, yeah, yeah, ah, right there. More of that. <laughs> yeah, what if we could receive the gift of that, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of making it about, oh, if somebody else sees or notices or, you know, there's all of that awkwardness and weirdness that happens. And it's like, what, what, we should shut down the contribution is something that I'm also getting like when we choose to stop that energy or put a judgment on it we totally kill the possibilities of what it could create 
Right. Think about the scene from when Harry met Sally. And <laughs> Sally goes into total orgasm. And an old lady says, I'll have whatever she's having. Right. Yeah. Wow. What's the contribution? What's that contribution? And and that's why. I mean, I've been, you know, given this little joke of you're a walking orgasm. I just want to be around you because usually it turns me on. And I'm like, hey, how awesome is that? Thanks for receiving. <laughs> you know? All right, I'll share. I have no problem with that. <laughs> so what is the contribution that we be when we are the walking sex, when we are the walking invitation, we are that walking healing? You know, Sherry, my wife is a healer. Uh, she does craniosacral therapy, especially with young babies. And we go out in public. These babies don't need directions. They aren't told nothing. They're looking at her like, touch my head, touch my head. <laughs> you know? It's like when my bars need to be run. Honey, just touch my head. <laughs> we go towards what we are needing and desiring, and our bodies are communicating that with us if we will receive it. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Um, I... I'm so grateful for this conversation. I'm just, wow. It's, it's hilarious to me that, you know, a topic shows up and we, we have our excitement about, oh, yes, we want to play with this. And we, like, have a sense of, you know, we're perceiving the possibilities of those conversations or those creations, whatever, for, for all of you who are listening, like, whatever that project or thing is for you. And then I love how it shows up in a way that completely – goes in a different direction, surpasses what um, you thought it was going to do. <laughs> it was just like, wow, you know, wow. What was the topic again? <laughs> I think I left this structure a long time ago. <laughs> Ooh. So, um, so is there anything else that's wanting to be spoken to as we're bringing today's conversation to a... <sighs> yeah, I jotted down... Um... And, and this will be in the email to everybody, but I jotted down, um, it begins with me. So as it, you know, it begins with you. So as you were talking about the sex experiences and like, I just, as someone who was never in my body, who as I've always been a sexual being, but was, you know, taught that that was wrong. So turned it off. And um, now I have the ability to when I look at a situation, I look at an experience, I'm, I'm in a conversation. If something bites me, pings me, tweaks me, irks me, hurt, whatever, I just go, I'm like, okay, it begins with me. What is this? You know, I, I determine whether it's resistance or, it, you know, if it's judgment, like I just, it starts with me. So in terms of sex is like oxygen, are you willing, as Jen said, to put your oxygen mask on you first at all cost? always and forever, you number one. It has to begin with you as the individual. And that's where it got a little tough for me in the beginning because I was such a motherfucking people pleaser and I put everybody else ahead of me that when I started to say no in the beginning, I thought I was going to die, right? I thought I was literally going to just drop dead and I thought other people were going to do the same or s some variation of the theme. So it, I just had to keep choosing. And the more that I chose to put the oxygen and then allow it, I didn't die. Nobody else died and things got better. So that's what pinged for me is wanted to come through is you got to start with you. You have to put the mask on you. And sometimes it, you will have to put people in line behind you. Doesn't mean you're not going to assist them and support them, but you can't if you don't take care of you. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. I love yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Jen, we want to let folks know how to play with you some more. Oh, yes. awesome <laughs> you're so cute thank you so much this has been so fun i'd love to play with more people because i love this conversation but you know i just go with my name jen halterman it's j-e-n-h-a-l-t-e-r-m-a-n dot me and that's my website and if you click on a little star on the home screen of my website it'll take you to a secret page it's all about sex and if you look for me on Facebook, it's Jen Halterman now. And that's it. Just, you know, pretty, I'm pretty easy to find. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and did you want to tell people about your new Facebook page that you are? I, yeah, I did. I just released a new Facebook page. It's going to focus on the sex part. And that is called 
seducing aliveness. <laughs> and we'll have, uh, for those of you watching the replay, you can just scroll down a bit and look in the text and we'll have Jen's primary uh, link so that you can connect yeah. to all of that um, yeah. with ease. And oh my gosh, Jen, thank you. Um, and in the near future, Jen and I will be playing a bit more together. So look for some fun stuff. Uh, if you're finding us already on Facebook, stay tuned for some things with that. Um, and of course, you're welcome to come back and play with us here on Sexually Speaking, mm -hmm. Jen, because we adore you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was such an honor to be part of your first threesome. How is it getting better than that? It's so awesome to have you as our first threesome. Love it. <laughs> wow. Um, so are there any tools that, um, any particular things you want to leave anybody with today, Jen? We'll start with you. Um, if there's, uh -huh. a, if people are finding themselves at a sticking point where they might stop be noticing they're not breathing <laughs> what what's a go-to tool for you to get present to change it right Ellen actually somebody in the chat room said get to living and that is a catchphrase that I use you better get to living and and so what I do is I really play with stuff I have a breaking up with judgment group that I run and one of the biggest tools that I teach them is every single time they go to judgment every time I use the tool Wow, interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Mm -hmm. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And I'll be like, interesting, I have this point of view about their point of view about me. And it literally, I, I am not afraid to laugh in public and I do it rather loudly. If I have it done on the show, you might notice. <laughs> but I'll just bust out laughing and I'll look at somebody and it they know that I knew their judgment. And I just laugh because it's like, Interesting point of view you have, I'm too loud. Interesting point of view you have that my boobs are huge. Interesting point of view you have that I'm beautiful. Interesting point of view. And I just stay in my own damn lane. Stay in my business, my own lane on the highway. That's, okay. that's my tool, my go-to. I love that. I love both of those. I love the get to living. That's I'm going to be adopting that one because I love the energy of that. Rhonda, how about you? What's bubbling for you, my love? Oh, man. So many. So, you know, I love those show me questions. So, um, yes. you know, universe, please show me the thriving, life-giving oxygen I truly be. You know, and, yeah. and again, for me, they show up in energies, right? And it's like everything just goes whoosh when I ask it. I'm like, all right, cool. Show me That's more. Juicy. Yeah. That's How about you, love? Juicy. Um, I love show me's and I love the space questions for me. Um, mm -hmm. How much space must I occupy to have greater ease with this right mm -hmm. now? And my body just kind of is able to go, because I... I do notice that I stop breathing from time to time, <laughs> or I try to, or I'm holding my breath and trying to have a conversation, and that doesn't work out well. Um, and then especially when, you know, if we find ourselves in those moments where there's the choice of intimacy that we could be making um, or choosing, and oftentimes we stop breathing there. So, um, and it does, it allows me also to just be present with who's there and whatever points of view they might be having. Um, so yeah, how much space must I occupy to have greater ease with all of this mm -hmm. now? So folks, if you want to play more with Jen, please look her up. Please stay tuned on our Facebook pages. We're all playing with some very cool stuff. And um, I know Miss Rhonda is uh, choosing into some awesomeness of her uh, new ventures with her new ventures. And I am so excited for her to tell you more about that very soon. Um, Jen and I will be playing. Rhonda and I will continue to be playing. Uh, please join us if you're not already on the guest list for Sexually Speaking. If you want to play with us live, please get on the guest list and we we will send you a link each week to join us live and you'll also get the replay link directly sent to you. Um, if you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and you love to watch the replays, thank you. And if you would like to have any particular topic up for discussion, submit a request or a question if you'd like to work with us beyond or outside of the scope of these conversations, please email Rhonda and I at conversationswithkr at gmail.com. And um, wow, tune into our radio, show, radio shows if you want to play more with us for free. Uh, Rhonda airs, uh, Rhonda show Potency is My Game. Air 
airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. And it ain't no lie, let me tell you. And tomorrow, if you're watching this on Tuesday, the 27th, on September 28th, the topic is, is it a risk being you? Mm. Uh-huh. That'll be a fun one. Might have a little something, <laughs> something in there what for you. What talk about on Friday? <laughs> Friday, Friday, I'm talking about, are you willing to be a disappointment? Oh, oh. good one. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are playing big. Yeah. Peace is on Fridays, living well at 11 Eastern time. Mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. FM. Yes, yes. And Miss Jen, um, do you, do you want to share our, our, the October 7 thing yet? Or do you, is that, is that light? We're here. Let's Come do play. it. Come do play. it. Do okay. it. Do it. So Jen and I will be uh, saying hello to the world as a duo of conversationalists on October the 7th. That is a Friday. And um, if you are playing with our Facebook pages, you'll see the notices there. If you're on either of our lists, we'll also be sending you some information. And gosh, you know, what are you willing, what are you ready to choose for you? What are you willing to choose for you? And are you willing to let all of the generativeness of living of your aliveness, of the sex, of the juiciness, of the awesomeness, of the magic, of the potency of you, and all of the possibilities of how you can show up and and what you could be creating. Are you willing to breathe all of that in? Are you willing to let it get you high? And in those moments that you are really low, are you willing to let it pick you back up again? So... Oh, we adore you. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Jen Halterman. Mwah. Thank yes. you, Rhonda Burns. Oh, Thank my gosh. You, ladies, I'm really grateful for you. Divas. Thank you. Yes. Thank and you. please Thank come you. back next week and join us for another unconventional conversation to Unfuck Your Life, where we are mm-hmm. celebrating all things sex and the sex of everything here on Sexually Speaking. We adore you. And we desire you to be having more fun than you could imagine with your whole life. So we'll see you again in the near future, however we play. Thank you, everybody. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Woo!